Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So welcome back and uh, this is lecture number 48 and today we will uh, talk about the properties of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So here the first property, so if we have a lambda as an eigenvalue of A and then x uh, be its corresponding eigenvector, then this alpha a has eigenvalue lambda a and the corresponding eigenvector is x. So, what is this property that if lambda is the eigenvalue of a and x is uh, its corresponding uh, eigenvector, in that case the alpha times a, alpha is some, uh, some constant, some scalar quantity from uh, the set of real numbers for, ex for instance. So, here the alpha a will have the eigenvalue alpha lambda. So, this alpha will be multiplied simply to lambda and the corresponding eigenvector will remain the same that is x. Uh, this property we can uh, easily verify. So, here a x is equal to lambda x that is the relation uh, we have for eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, if we multiply by alpha here both the sides, so alpha a and this will be alpha and then uh, this alpha a we are treating as, as a matrix. So, alpha will be multiplied to each of the entries of a and here alpha times lambda. So, with this relation what do we see that this alpha a has the eigenvalue lambda or alpha lambda and x is the eigenvector uh, from this relation the matrix times x should be some uh, scalar into x. So, that is the from here we, we conclude that this uh, alpha lambda is the eigenvalue of this matrix alpha a with the eigenvector uh, same as before that is x. So, another uh, property of the eigenvalues eigenvectors we have uh, if a power m. So, we are multiplying this a uh, m times. So, a power m has eigenvalues uh, lambda power m and the corresponding eigenvector is x again for any positive integer m. So, if we have for instance a square, so its eigenvalue will be just the lambda square with the same eigenvector as uh, the a has. So, this also we can easily see because we have this a x is equal to lambda x and now we can multiply for example, just to see this result for a square. So, we multiply here a both the sides and the right hand side here this lambda is a constant here we can bring to the to the outside and then we have this a x there and the a x we can replace again uh, by lambda x by this relation a x is equal to lambda x. So, if we replace here a x by lambda x then what will happen we have this uh, lambda into lambda x that is lambda square x. So, what relation we have now here a square x that was the multiplication of this a with a. So, a square x is equal to lambda square x which tells that this uh, a square the matrix a square has the eigenvalue uh, here lambda square and lambda was the eigenvalue of a. So, with this uh, relation we can easily uh, get the eigenvalues of the a square or a cube or a uh, power any integer m because it will just uh, the power will go to the eigenvalue and the remaining uh, the eigenvector will be also the same which was the eigenvector of this lambda uh, for matrix A. Now, the next property, uh, so here we have seen this lambda square is the eigenvalue of A. Now, the two eigenvectors of a square matrix A corresponding to two distinct eigenvalues of A are linearly independent. So, what we will prove here that uh, two eigenvectors corresponding to two distinct eigenvalues are always linearly independent. This observation we already uh, have seen for numerical examples, but we can prove here uh, for more general uh, 
uh, matrix for any matrix uh, we can uh, prove this result theoretically. So, what do we consider now? So, let us say x 1 and x 2 be two eigenvectors of a corresponding to two distinct eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2. So, these lambda 1 and lambda 2 these are two distinct eigenvalues we have assumed and their corresponding eigenvectors are denoted by the x 1 is corresponding to lambda 1 and uh, x 2 is the corresponding to this eigenvalue lambda 2. So, with then meaning is that we have this relation they satisfy this relation that a x 1 is equal to lambda 1 times x 1 and a x 2 is equal to lambda 2 x 2 because they are the pair of this eigenvalues eigenvectors. And now what actually we want to show that this x 1 and x 2 are linearly independent. So, for that we will consider this linear combination c 1 x 1 plus c 2 x 2 is equal to 0. And so, this is the 0 vector here the right hand side and then we will show that this will imply that this is true this linear combination is 0 this is true only when x c 1 is 0 and c 2 is 0 uh, that that shows that this uh, uh, x 1 and x 2 are linearly independent. So, to do so we will uh, consider here the c 1 and this uh, x 1. So, we have multiplied basically by uh, the matrix this A by the given matrix A. So, we have C 1 A x 1 because C 1 was a constant. So, we have taken out here. So, C uh, 1 times A x 1 and then C 2 times A x 2. Yes. So, C 1 times A x 1 and the C 2 times A x 2. This is the relation we got from this equation uh, by just multiplying this to, to A. Well, so the next having so here now we have a x 1 and we have a x 2 that there which we can replace by uh, lambda 1 x 1 and the lambda 2 x 2. So, we have basically these two equations now one is uh, the c 1 x 1 plus c 2 x 2 is equal to 0 and the another equation we have here uh, c 1 uh, lambda 1 x 1 plus c 2 lambda 2 uh, x 2. Indeed, this uh, unknown we can consider as C 1 x 1 and the another one C 2 x 2. So, here also we have C 1 x 1 and here also we have C 2 x 2. So, these uh, two forms a system of a linear equation system of this linear equation and with unknown here uh, the unknowns are the C 1 x 1 and C 2 uh, x 2. So, these are the uh, two linear equations or they form the system of linear equation uh, with unknowns c 1 x 1 and c 2 uh, x 2. With this, so we have uh, two equations now this c 1 x 1 plus c 2 x 2 is equal to 0 and with this lambda 1 c 1 x 1 plus lambda 2 c 2 x 2 is equal to 0. So, we want to solve now uh, for this c 1 x 1 and c 2 x 2. So, what we do we uh, multiply this equation number 1 here. So, we multiply this equation by uh, lambda 1. So, if we multiply here then we have lambda 1 c 1 x 1 and lambda 1 c 2 x 2. And now, with these two equations we can uh, uh, subtract uh, this equation number 2 from this equation 1 and then what we will get this lambda 2 minus this lambda 1 because this term will cancel out. So, we will get lambda 2 minus lambda 1 with this c 2 x 2 is equal to 0. And now, what we see that this equation will imply simply that c 2 equal to is equal to 0 because this lambda 2 minus lambda 1 cannot be 0 because we have two distinct eigenvalues and this x 2 is the eigenvector which again is a non zero vector. So, this equation implies that c 2 uh, must be 0 as this uh, lambda 1 minus lambda 2 or lambda 2 minus lambda 1 is not 0 and x 2 is also not 0. And then from this equation number uh, 1 again here c 1 x 1 plus c 2 x 2 if we substitute this c 2 uh, equal to 0. So, this term will be will be 0 and then we have uh, this relation that c 1 x 1 is equal to 0 and again with the same argument because this x 1 cannot be 0. So, here again this implies that c 1 is equal to 0. Uh, 
uh, since this x 1 is not equal to 0. So, with this we have uh, now the c 1 0 and c 2 0 and that was the aim uh, to show that in this linear combination uh, c 1 x 1 plus c 2 x 2 equal to 0 is possible when this c 1 is 0 and c 2 is 0 meaning that these Eigen vectors are, are linearly independent. So, the Eigen vectors here x 1 and x 2 both are linearly independent. So, this was the case when we have considered two distinct Eigen values, but we can also generalize this case for more Eigen values. For instance, here we have uh, Eigen values x 1, x 2, x 3, x r uh, corresponding to our distinct Eigen values here. So, these are the Eigen vectors corresponding to these Eigen values uh, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda r respectively, and in that case also we can use the similar trick to prove that these Eigen vectors are linearly independent. So, we have this very nice result that corresponding to uh, distinct Eigen values uh, the Eigen vectors are linearly independent. So, another result we have this at if x is uh, an Eigen vector of a corresponding to the Eigen value lambda then this k x is also the Eigen vector corresponding to the same Eigen value lambda. So, this we have also seen before that uh, for, for uh, the given Eigen vector you can multiply by any constant and that will also remain the Eigen vector and this is what we will see here uh, more formally theoretically that uh, this is true for any uh, matrix. So, here A x is equal to lambda x that is the relation. So, uh, tells us that lambda is the is, is one of the Eigen value and the corresponding Eigen vector is x and then this k times. So, we multiplied uh, the equation by k here both the sides and then we have k times this a x is equal to k times this lambda x and then we can combine this like a into this k x and is equal to lambda times this k x there. So, we have this relation that a uh, some uh, vector here is equal to lambda the same vector k x which tells us that this k x is the Eigen vector again if the x was the Eigen vector the k times x is also the Eigen vector for any this k non zero scalar. Here the if x is the Eigen vector of the matrix A then x cannot correspond to more than one Eigen value of A. So, another important result that this Eigen vector is, is like unique. So, if you have uh, an Eigen vector corresponding to let us say the lambda then this x cannot correspond to any other uh, Eigen value. So, it is it is a unique in that sense. So, here if we assume that for a given matrix here we have A x is equal to lambda 1 x this is our assumption and we also assume that this A x is equal to lambda 2 x meaning we have assumed that this x the Eigen vector x corresponds to two Eigen values that means the lambda 1 and lambda 2. So, these two Eigen values correspond to the same Eigen vector x this is our assumption and we will see now that this is not possible. So, having this relation we have actually the lambda 1 x is equal to lambda 2 x because uh, they have the same value here of vector a x a x. So, they both are same. So, lambda 1 x is equal to lambda 2 x which tells here the lambda 1 minus lambda 2 uh, times x is equal to 0. <coughs> and this x is a ve Eigen vector. So, it cannot be 0. So, naturally we, we should have here that lambda 1 minus lambda 2 is equal to 0. So, lambda 1 minus lambda 2 is equal to 0 meaning the lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 uh, since this x is a Eigen vector. And so, our assumption here is, is somehow says now if we have taken that there were two Eigen values. So, these two Eigen values have to be the same Eigen values you cannot have two distinct Eigen values which can correspond to the same Eigen vector. So, here the a minus uh, k i has Eigen value lambda minus k and the corresponding Eigen vector is x. So, another result which says that this a minus k i. So, if we subtract uh, this k from the diagonal entries here. So, the Eigen values uh, will be lambda minus k of this new matrix and the corresponding Eigen vector will remain as uh, x. So, to see this again we start with this uh, standard result on the Eigen values Eigen vector that means A x is equal to lambda x. Having this A x is equal to lambda x 
we cannot subtract this uh, kx from both the both the sides. So, here from lambda x we have subtracted this kx and here also the same thing the kx. So, this is nothing but the kx because this ix is is simply x. So, here also we have kx, here also we have kx both the sides we have uh, subtracted this kx. Here for x we have written uh, ix because we have also the matrix together. So, it will be easy now to combine. So, having this now we can uh, take this x common from this left hand side. So, a minus this k i into x and is equal to here also this lambda minus k into x. So, with this relation tells that if uh, uh, this a minus k i has the eigenvalue uh, lambda minus k. So, this a minus k i vector or matrix sorry is uh, has the eigenvalue lambda minus k with the same eigenvector uh, x as before. So, this is another result that if we have this uh, uh, new matrix which is just the a minus k i then we know about the eigenvalues uh, from the eigenvalues of a. And this a inverse uh, again important here that if it exists of course, then only we are talking about this result. So, if a inverse exists for a matrix, then this a inverse will have eigenvalue here uh, or eigenvalues 1 over lambda. So, if we have lambda 1, lambda 2 uh, eigenvalues for instance of a, then a inverse will have 1 over lambda 1, 1 over lambda 2 as an eigenvalue. So, here the a inverse will have uh, eigenvalue 1 over lambda and the corresponding eigenvector will be x. So, eigenvector will not change only the eigenvalue will change for this uh, inverse matrix. To see this result we have this a x is equal to lambda x and uh, if we multiply by a inverse both the sides. So, we have a inverse into a x the right hand side also we have a inverse into uh, this lambda x. So, we have multiplied both the sides by this a inverse and then uh, what we have this a inverse x is equal to. So, a inverse x from this side what we have here a inverse x. So, here we have a inverse x and this lambda it is a constant term we can take to the to the left hand side where this a inverse a is, is just the identity matrix and identity matrix with this x will give us x here and this lambda goes to this uh, left side. So, that we will get 1 over lambda and this a inverse x remains here. So, what relation we have now that a inverse x is equal to 1 over lambda times x that means this 1 over lambda here 1 over lambda is the eigenvalue. Uh, of this a inverse matrix. So, a inverse x is equal to 1 over lambda times x. So, a and a transpose uh, have uh, have the same uh, eigenvalues. So, a and a transpose have same eigenvalues and uh, which we can again easily uh, see because the determinant of a minus lambda i that is the characteristic equation which actually gives the eigenvalues. So, here this characteristic uh, polynomial which is a minus lambda i we know the property of the determinant that the determinant of this matrix a minus lambda i will be the same as the determinant of a minus lambda i transpose. So, the transpose does not change the determinant of a matrix. So, that property we have used here that the determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to determinant of this a transpose of that matrix a minus lambda i. Now, the property of the transpose says here that a minus lambda i transpose will be uh, a transpose minus lambda and i transpose which is again i. So, here this is equal to the determinant of a transpose minus lambda i and that shows itself that the determinant of this. So, this characteristic polynomial here a minus lambda i same as the characteristic polynomial of a transpose minus lambda i and this relation says that we have the same characteristic equation for a and a transpose uh, that means they will lead to the same eigenvalues. So, here the result is that a and a transpose have uh, the same 
uh, will have the same uh, eigen value. So, A and A transpose have same eigen value. So, that is another uh, important result which easily we can uh, we can find out with the help of this determinant property. <coughs> Next theorem. So, here the characteristic roots uh, I mean the eigen values. So, sometimes we also call the characteristic roots. So, the eigen values of um, Hermitian matrix are real. So, what is the Hermitian matrix? So, we know that A is Hermitian when uh, A star is equal to A meaning the conjugate transpose the star means here that we are taking the transport and also we are taking the co complex conjugate of the matrix A. So, this complex conjugate of this transpose is equal to A then we call that A is Hermitian matrix. So, what is this result that for Hermitian matrices the roots are real because what we have also seen that though the matrix uh, having all real entries, but we can get the characteristic roots as complex number we have seen in, in previous uh, lectures one of the examples where we had a very simple uh, 2 by 2 matrix with real entries and it is uh, characteristic polynomial or I mean the characteristic roots or the eigenvalues were were uh, non real. So, the complex. So, here we have at least the results for the Hermitian matrix that all the characteristic roots are real in this case. So, if lambda be a, a characteristic root uh, of A and lambda the corresponding eigenvector, then we will show that this lambda has to be real. How? So, we have this A x is equal to lambda x so that is the property of the relation of the eigenvalues eigenvector again. We multiply here by this x star term. So, what is x star again the transpose of x uh, and its complex conjugate. So, we have multiplied by this vector both the sides and then this uh, lambda is, is a constant term. So, we can always uh, take uh, into the front here. So, the, this is x star x. So, we have x star a x is equal to lambda x star x that is a one relation. And now, we take the conjugate transpose both the sides of this equation here x star a x is equal to lambda x star x. So, what do we get here x star a x complex conjugate and here also we take this conjugate transpose again this x star and then we have the properties here that this will be uh, x star and a star and again x star there. So, I mean the x star uh, star that will be x. And here also we will have uh, the same scenario the x star and then the x star star will become x and this lambda will have its conjugate there lambda bar. So, we have this relation and we have also this relation x star a x is equal to lambda x star x we have this relation x star a x is equal to lambda bar x star x. Just, just by taking the complex conjugate from this equation we got this equation and now we have these two equations here whose uh, left hand side will be the same because a star is a. So, here a here also this a star is a. So, with these two equations what we can conclude that this right hand side uh, should be equal to 0 that means lambda x star x is equal to lambda bar x star x. The reason is that this a star and this a r are the same here they are the same. So, naturally the right hand side will be also the same here and we have uh, lambda x star x is equal to lambda bar x star x. And this one now what, what it tells that this uh, lambda. Uh, so, we can bring to the left hand side. So, lambda minus this lambda bar x star x is equal to 0 and x is the eigenvector. So, that cannot be uh, 0 x star x cannot be 0. So, here the lambda must be equal to uh, lambda bar because this quantity cannot be 0. So, this has to be 0. So, here what we have seen that the lambda is equal to lambda bar and uh, that is what we want to, to see here that the lambdas are real. So, if lambda is the eigenvalue of uh, Hermitian matrix then the lambda is equal to lambda bar meaning uh, it is a real number it cannot be a complex number. Okay. 
So, another similarly we can prove these following results which have the similar lines of the proof which we have just done that the eigenvalues of this uh, real uh, symmetric matrix are also real that is what we can also do and the eigenvalues of real skew symmetric matrix. So, here we have that means this A transpose is minus of the A. So, here this real skew trans uh, symmetric matrix are purely imaginary. So, this is also interesting here that eigenvalues of such matrices are, are either purely imaginary or 0 that is the two possibilities which again uh, if we follow the earlier proof we can also do this one and the eigenvalues of the skew Hermitian matrix. So, for Hermitian matrices we have seen but now the is, uh, skew Hermitian matrix that means this A star is equal to minus A. So, for, for those cases uh, the eigenvalues are purely imaginary or 0 again. So, these are the consequence of uh, the, the earlier proof which we can easily uh, see here. Now, another important result that the eigenvalues of unitary matrix are of unit modulo, modulus. So, this also we can prove in general that if we have this unitary matrix that means this A star A is equal to is equal to identity matrix. So, such matrices are called the unitary matrix. So, if we have unitary matrix then uh, we will prove now the eigenvalues the modulus of the eigenvalues uh, is 1. That means, we consider here A x is equal to lambda x and then uh, taking the complex conjugate here again A x star is equal to lambda x star what we will get. So, this uh, again we will uh, use this property. So, x star and the A star is equal to this will be lambda bar x star and from this A x, A x is equal to lambda x and from this equation x star uh, A star is equal to lambda bar x star we will now uh, continue the product here we will take the product. So, here x star a star the product with this a x these two these two uh, uh, vectors. So, x star a star multiplied by this vector a x is equal to this lambda bar x star and multiplied by this lambda x. So, we have done just the product here of these two and then what we see here x star and this associativity. So, we can use this a star a together and then x here lambda bar this lambda is a constant. So, we can easily take out and then we have x star x there and then we can take this uh, uh, common because this a star a is equal to i. So, here we have the identity matrix meaning this term is nothing but uh, this term here is nothing but the x star and and x. So, we have x star x here also we have x star x. So, we take common this x star x and we get 1 minus this lambda bar uh, lambda and that is equal to 0 and uh, with this we, we got this uh, result that this lambda bar lambda is equal to 1 or lambda bar lambda is nothing but the absolute value of lambda square. So, this absolute value of lambda square is equal to 1 because this cannot be 0. So, this has to be 0 which tells us this uh, lambda bar uh, square is equal to 0. So, meaning this uh, we got that this absolute value of lambda has to be 1. So, this unitary matrix the eigenvalues of the unitary matrix are of unit modulus. Same results we can also use for the orthogonal matrices because they are also having the same property A transpose A is equal to I. So, for orthogonal matrices also uh, we can prove the, the similar all absolutely all uh, same steps here and we can again prove that uh, their eigenvalues are also of unit modulus. The location of the eigenvalues now what we have just seen uh, in, in previous slide. So, if we have the skew Hermitian matrix their eigenvalues are imaginary purely imaginary here the unitary matrix they lie on this uh, modulus 1 and for the Hermitian matrix or the symmetric matrix uh, the values are, uh, are uh, sitting on the real axis. So, meaning they are the real numbers. So, here for skew Hermitian and skew symmetric the same thing unitary and orthogonal we have the same result that they are of uh, 
a unit modulus for Hermitian and symmetric we have also the same, re uh, same result for both that they are the real entries. Getting to the conclusion, so we have seen several properties of this uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. We have considered different different types of matrices where we can tell about whether the eigenvalues will be real, imaginary, pure imaginary or zero. So, here in all these properties uh, the simple idea was to use this A x is equal to lambda x and we played with this equation only to prove all these properties and now they can be used now without uh, doing all these numerical calculations. So we can compute uh, directly also with the help of these properties. So, these are the references we have used uh, to prepare these lectures and thank you for your attention.